types of numbers. You've probably heard types of numbers and thinking, I know, I know all the numbers. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know some more. But how how far do they go? How how many are there? And if you start to think about it, it doesn't matter what number you say, you can always plus one to that number and, and get another one. And these these numbers go forever. They they're infinite, infinitely long. And a common misconception is that infinite, infinity is the, the last number, but it's, it's not. It's just an idea. It's a concept that the numbers go forever. And all of these numbers, these numbers we call, we call our natural numbers. So these are our natural numbers. And we give it a symbol with this double stroked N. And we can do heaps of things with these, the natural numbers. We can, one plus two, that's three. We can do two times six, that's 12. We can do four minus three, that's one. We can do three minus four, or maybe not. We get a bit stuck. We get a bit stuck doing three minus four because we know four minus three is one. And a nice, a nice way to think about subtraction and even even addition is with money. So if you had four dollars and you someone took three dollars off you, you'd be left with one dollar. And if you had three dollars and someone wanted to take four dollars from you you could only give them three dollars but then you'd owe them one dollar you'd owe them one dollar and a way we can represent that with numbers is with minus one you have minus one dollar because you'd owe them you'd owe them a dollar and this brings about our new set of numbers so a new a new type of number all the negative numbers and even zero as well. So we've got zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. And these go forever as well. And these are these these numbers are called integers. So they're not natural numbers. They're they're their own set and they're called integers. And they're, the symbol for them is a the double stroke Z. So we have our we have our natural numbers and we have our integers and all the all the natural numbers they're also integers they're also integers that's why I drew the so we drew the box around all of them so all the integers all the natural numbers they're also integers as well And just with these numbers, we, we, can, we can do more things too. We can 10 divided by 5, we know that's 2. Because if you had $10 and you wanted to split it up between 5 people, they'd all get $2 each. You can do 5 divided by 10. Oh. Maybe we've got another problem here. We've, we don't have a number yet to, to define what five divided by 10 is. But if we think about if we had $5 and we needed to split it up between 10 people, they would get half a dollar each. They would all, everyone would get half a dollar each. And this is our new set of numbers. So we get, we get half a dollar each. This is our new set. So all these, all these fractions, all these fractions make a new set of numbers. So stuff like a half, a third, minus two sevenths, three eighths, 
all these, make up our new set called rational numbers. These are our rational numbers. And their symbol is this double stroked Q. And all the numbers we have so far are also rational numbers because a rational number is what we define as any number that can be written as a fraction. So we could take the number 8, for example, and write 8 over 1, which means 8 divided by 1, which is also 8. And that's also a rational, a rational number. Even 0 is 0 over 1. 0 divided by 1 is still 0. So all the numbers we have so far are also rational numbers. Let's have a look at 1 times 1, we know that's 1. 2 times 2, we know that's 4. 3 times 3, that's 9. 4 times 4, that's 16. 16. So the pattern we're looking at here is when we're taking the same number and multiplying it with itself, we get an answer. But what number do you need to multiply with itself to get to 2? If you ever think about it, probably getting a little bit stuck. Thinking, what, what number do you need times by itself to get to 2? We know 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 2 is 4. But what same number do you need to multiply with each other to get to 2? And the answer is, is none of these what we have so far. It's not... no can't times a fraction by itself and get to 2. There's no, no such number. And this opens the door for a, a new set of numbers. Because the, act, the number that you need to multiply by itself to get to 2 is actually the square root of 2. Might have seen this button on the calculator before, but the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 gives you 2. And these numbers are the ones uh, is what you need to be able to do this and we get our so stuff like root 2 root 3 root 5 not root 4 because root 4 is actually equal to 2 root 6 root 7 even pi there's another special number as well called e in maths and these numbers they actually cannot be expressed as a fraction that's why they're over here we can't there's no we can't pick two numbers one as the numerator one as the denominator where it's going to be equal to one of these numbers so these numbers cannot be expressed as a fraction and these numbers we call real numbers It has the double stroke R as a symbol, and everything so far is a real number. Now, let's have a look at we know 1 times 1, that's 1, minus 1 times minus 1. Is also equal to 1 because a negative times a negative is a positive we're going to learn about that later so if 1 times 1 is 1 and minus 1 times minus 1 is also 1 what number do you need to multiply by itself to give you minus 1 and the answer to that is pretty similar to before it's actually just the square root of minus 1 the square root of minus 1 times the square root of minus 1 gives you minus 1. But it doesn't belong in this real numbers set. Belongs on its own. Its own new set. And this might seem strange right now, but the square root of minus 1 is what mathematicians like to call the number i. And 
i belongs in the set of imaginary numbers. So you have this set of imaginary numbers with a double stroked i. So in the imaginary numbers, we have stuff like i, the square root of minus, which is the square root of minus 1, square root of minus 2, square root of minus pi, and stuff like that. And then when we draw our box now, the imaginary, the imaginary box is on its own because none of these numbers are imaginary numbers. But for example, integers is also rational and also real, but imaginary just on its own. And finally, we have our last set of numbers called complex numbers with a double stroke C. We have our complex numbers and a complex number is just a real number plus an imaginary number. So we can take any real number, which means we can take any one of these numbers and add it or subtract it with an imaginary number. And this makes a complex number. For example, one such number might be eight plus i. Another one could be minus two on seven minus square root of minus two. And a complex number brings all the numbers together so we can draw a box around everything now. Everything comes together with complex numbers. Uh -huh.